Good morning. Welcome to Parkway United Church of Christ, where through God's Spirit, we seek to listen deeply, build community, and act for justice. We encourage, if, if you've not made a name tag and had a chance to wear it, to do so as we seek to build community with one another. And also, those in the front pew at this time, if you'd be willing to start our welcome sign-in booklets and We'd be thrilled to have people's contact information so we can stay connected beyond our service of worship. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Regardless of your um, personality, your background, your gender identity or expression, your racial identity, Whether you believe Puxahontani Phil is correct or not, <laughs> you are welcome here. Whether you can call yourself Christian or you just can't even begin to have that label, you are welcome here. So I want to take a moment with you, like we have practice of doing at the start of worship, just to really find our bodies and selves in whatever place you are in, whether you are in the sanctuary or in your home or at a cafe listening online to get into our bodies as best we can. I'm going to invite you to inhale slowly and exhale to these prompts. As we inhale, we say to ourselves to love and be loved. And exhale, my purpose remains. Let's try that. To love and be loved. My purpose remains. On the inhale, I don't know my path but I am led into freedom. I don't know my path, but I'm led into freedom. On the inhale, I listen for the divine. On the exhale, my soul whispers back. I listen for the divine. My soul whispers back. Let's take another moment to find a sense of stillness. May it be so. We receive our prelude.
I invite you to rise in body and or spirit for opening prayer and our opening song. Join me as you will for our opening. We made a decision to be present today, not just to say things about you, presence, but to experience and share the energy of sacred hope. We come to notice heaven in a glimpse of the here and now, in the dream of wholeness, in a more connected sense of community with all. Thank you for the chance, mystery. Thank you. We turn to a hymn of the early 18th century and sing with Isaac from all the that dwell below the skies. Good morning. morning. Now is the time where we will have celebrations and prayer concerns. I'll start here in the sanctuary. If you are online, you may type in the chat. Having a bit of an echo. Let us remember in prayer Mary M., Pauline J., um, Good Travels for Bill D., um, Barb's mom, Diane S., Nan's family, Ann M., and for the staff and leadership of Harvest Market as they um, have had to close in these days. If you have any prayer concerns and celebrations here in the sanctuary, you may speak them out now. Yes, Tom. Tom celebrating the movie Groundhog's Day. <laughs> again. Again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for comedic relief. Shashi, then Lisa.
prayers for Shashi and um, her cat, Angel, and her hopeful, hopeful return. Lisa? Lisa and for her cousin Julie and her cancer treatments. Yes, Lee. Um, I'd just like to ask prayers for a coworker of mine who uh, she had just recently discovered that she had some mass um, that's in her uh, abdomen, and she's going to be having surgery on Friday. So just prayers for her. For Lee's coworker and a surgical procedure on this coming Friday. Yes, Roseanne. Prayers for Roseanne's cousin, Frank. I'm going to look over here online. Celebration for Beth and the elevators being repaired. I'm excited for you, Beth. <laughs> I'm super excited. Okay. And prayer for... Um, her car needing a new engine. Um, for Diana, prayer for her health and healing. Let us hold these prayers and these celebrations in our hearts. Hold them dearly. Hold them as if they were your own. Let's have a moment of silence. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught in the language and tradition of your choice. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kinship, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, let us share a sign of peace with one another as a community living in a resilience-informed way and aware of health concerns. Peace unto you all. Okay. Peace, everyone. Peace. Hey, yeah. hey, Beth. Sorry about your car. Oh. Glad about your elevators. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, at least I had some exercise there, but I love yeah. being able to drive. I mean, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well. Hey, Anne. Yeah. I don't know you, Diana, but good health. Di Diana, if you're trying to say something, you're still muted. My, I'm muted. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. she's good. You're good. I was, there we I go. was so glad Hi. to see you. Diane the Madries. Hello. Good to see you. And good to see everyone, really. And uh I think uh Pat Schaub is on there somewhere. She's not yeah. showing herself today. Hey Pat. Good to she's see you. She's been sick and I <laughs> hope she's went better. Yeah. And hey, Dolores, Susan. hello hey, there. Hey, Dolores. Hey, you're Dolores. doing well. Browse or who? Hey, Terry. Hey, hey Nelson. Morning, Terry. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. Hey, Diana. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hello.
Everybody, oh, bye me. now. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's Pat. Hey, how, are you doing better? No. Oh no. No. Oh, so sorry, good. Pat. Yeah. That's not good. That's too frosty. Okay. You feel better, Pat. You take care of yourself. Bye bye. See you. Well, they're continuing to talk, so. Anne, how are you doing? Good, good, good. And Nancy, nice to see you. week Elmo of our Sesame Street fame said just checking in <laughs> and then asked how's everybody doing the response was not so good to quote channel 12 the world is experiencing the grinding war in the Ukraine potential famine in Gaza and seemingly un endless drumbeat of mass shootings in the U.S. Many young Americans are struggling with anxiety and depression as the country faces a well-documented mental health crisis. And in many places, in, we're in the middle of a cold, dark winter, unquote. It's a scary world out there, folks. NPR says around the globe, one in four people are lonely. Sesame Street says there are three things you can do. Do something with friends, be all ears, and be brave. NPR suggests, among other things, check yourself to see what makes you happy and find a group that matches your interests. I like bingo. <laughs> I told you all of that to tell you this. Our wise, which stands for welcome, our wise team, which stands for welcoming, inclusive, supportive, and engaging, is sponsoring a Latin connection to combat loneliness. It is a program to connect with one another via phone or internet, or just go grab a cup of coffee. Each connection will determine what the format will be. The program will begin February the 14th, you know, the Louvre Day, <laughs> and last until March 31st or beyond. Please see Adelaide. Adelaide, raise your hand. For those that don't know her or myself in the narthex after the service. You can also call the church or send in uh, or send an email to the church. All information is confidential. I get a line. <laughs> I'm going to milk it. People on, people on the internet, please join in on your chat feature. Thank you. Thank you. How's that? Is that picking it up? Um, our first reading comes from Psalm 14. Um, I mean, Psalm 147, pardon me, uh, 1 through 11. And I'm going to ask you to help me with the first word. So all together, 
When I give the signal, we're going to sing or yell, Hallelujah, okay? Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to sing praise to our God. Praise is beautiful. Praise is fitting. God's the one who rebuilds Jerusalem, who regathers Israel's scattered exiles. He heals the heartbroken and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and assigns each a name. Our Lord is great with limitless, limitless strength. We'll never comprehend what he knows and does. God puts the fallen on their feet again and pushes the wicked into the ditch. Sing to God a thanksgiving hymn. Play music on your instruments to God, who fills the sky with clouds, preparing rain for the earth and then turning the mountains green with grass, feeding both the cattle and the crows. He's not impressed with horsepower. The size of our muscles means little to him. Those who fear God get God's attention. They can depend on his strength. Our gospel lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, verses 29 to 39, and we're reading from the Common English Bible. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. The whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Now Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go into the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout all of Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. May God bless the reading of his word.
Thank you. Amen. So perhaps, Jim, you want me to speak without script today. Do you by chance have it? So we'll, we'll give it a go. So, you know, uh, every, every uh, one of us, I think, in life sometimes um, realizes that um, we are needing to be free on the inside. We can try to handle all of the externals in our lives, you know, regardless of what relationship we're in, what our role is vocationally or as a volunteer, where we happen to live, um, we also need liberation in body, mind, and spirit. And so um, today we take a look at a passage that maybe helps us with that. Um, I don't have it, but we'll, we'll make do. <laughs> so, um, um, Jesus uh, comes right from the wilderness, right? And the Gospel of Mark straight out in the first chapter. And what does he do in the wilderness? Jesus confronts his demons his own expectations, his own needing to pay attention mostly to the externals of life when he's got interior healing to do. And he goes straight, not just to the synagogue, but to the synagogue at the Sabbath, and he frees a man of demons. That's the story right before the story which... Uh, uh, Carl shared with us. Now, if he were to do be doing some private kind of therapy with this fella, if he were to do some curing off to the side, the religious authorities would think nothing of it. But already in the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, they are exercised. They are they are worked up because what Jesus does is in confronting. Uh, the demons is to um, to um, uh, uh, do a public action because freedom is about r addressing the fact that certain rituals are taken away, that spirituality is not about freedom all the time, that knuckling under to the empires of our world does not make us free. We have many little deaths all along our lives. Deaths of expectation, deaths of past identity, past death of broken dreams. And the household of God's promise to us in the midst of that is you can be lifted up. Resurrection is not just about what happens after the cross event in the gospel stories. Resurrection is not what happens to us just at our death. It happens all along the way. The entire gospel story is about resurrection. We are brought from the small deaths of life, those experiences of being in exile, back to our birthright identities as children of the sacred center. And that's what Jesus is engaged in, resurrection stories right at the beginning of the gospel. So what does he do? He takes the hand of Simon's mother-in-law and he lifts her up. And he takes the lives of so many who are uh, filled by demons, sick folks. These are resurrection stories. People are lifted out of confinement into the world of possibility. People are lifted out of disorientation to the truth of who they actually are. Because he's understanding that this business about liberation, this business about being, creating a beloved community, 
also means freeing people's minds and spirits and bodies from the oppressive forces that keep them down. So Jesus, after the synagogue healing, goes to this private house and lifts, it says, literally lifts a woman out of a fever. And we're kind of like, oh, big deal. You know, what does she end up doing? She starts serving all of the dudes in Jesus's party. How is that liberation? <laughs> but look, in the, in the text, it says she is lifted up for diakonia for engaging in service, for doing what is hers in the world to do. Because you can't be free if you're not contributing what yours is yours to do. And some of the translations of that word diakonia in the Gospel of Mark is kicking up the dust. So she's not being lifted up for some subservient household chores. She is being lifted up to kick up the dust of the world. How would it be if each one of us were actually lifted up to kick up some dust? And then that, after the sundown, after the Sabbath is over, where people start feeling a little bit more comfortable about getting out there and asking for what they really need, the whole town, it says, the whole town gathers in the front porch of this woman's hut. They bring their loved ones to be cast out of demons. Now, we 21st century folks, we get our undies in a bundle about this business about casting out demons, or we completely ignore it. There's a guy, Trip Fuller, he's sort of a progressive Christian blogger, and he wrote a couple of years ago on a blog, Demons are shadows from our injury. Demons are shadows from our brokenness. Demons are the scar tissue in our fractured souls. So in my words, demons are the result of, yeah, maybe some poor decisions that we, we've regretted in life, but more likely the ways we have figured out how to get some love, how to survive some of the things that we've had to go through, go through when we've not been truly seen for who we are, whether that's our upbringing or our communities or the, the dominant culture that has done this stuff to us. It's our way of getting through experiences of trauma. But sometimes in, in our life now, not always, but sometimes we don't need those shields, those false personas, those shadows to get us through. And the spirit wants to lift us up into a more authentic identity. Spirit is doing nothing less than the work of resurrection with us. Spirit wants to heal those scar tissues so we can actually feel the resources of our community to be made whole. But here's the other dimension of this thing called exorcism in these stories. They usually happen on the edges of community where people aren't getting exactly what they need. The people who are most vulnerable. They happen with those who are left out. Not everybody gets cured because that's not exactly Jesus' mission. But Jesus comes to address what the public health officials say in the fancy words. He comes to address social, the, um, um, the, uh, the uh, social determinants of health. He's, in a contemporary way of saying it, he's come to address the realities of things like women of African descent in this country are two and a half more times likely to have serious health issues in pregnancy regardless of their income regardless of their education. He's coming to address things like the reality of the dis disproportionate uh, suffering of indigenous folks with substance use disorder and depression. He's coming to address the reality of people who are not getting enough to eat or are given the 
leftovers of society, carbohydrate-rich leftovers with all kinds of health issues. He's coming to address the social determinants of health. So demons, Walter, in my mind, demons are nothing other than the colonization of our minds and our spirits and our bodies and our relationships. And now that can look like internalized oppression for some of us, and it can look like internalized privilege and supremacy for others, and it can look like a whole bundle of both because of our intersectional identities as people in this world. Because we drink our culture, and it twists our way of seeing who we are in relationship to everybody else. Now, Ched Myers in his seminal work on the Gospel of Mark, Binding the Strong Man, says, exorcism is confronting the war of myths and asserting a different kind of authority. Well, what are you talking about? Chad, are you saying exorcism is nothing less than giving people the truth about themselves so they can go out tomorrow and face the lies about themselves and, and say, this is who I am. Notice then how Jesus consistently in these stories with demons, what does he do? He tells them to hush up. Because they know the score, don't they? They're the, the embodiment of the forces of oppression that don't want people free. They don't want people free on the inside because then they can't be controlled on the outside. Jesus says, don't you dare name me. I'm going to name my own self, thank you very much. You know the story, Fannie Lou Hamer in 1962 went to the courthouse of Sunflower County in Ruleville, Mississippi to register to vote. And they didn't want her, to, want her to register. And she said, you cannot take my name away. I may be a sharecropper woman who doesn't have enough to eat, but you will not take my name away. My name is going to show up in your book as a citizen of the United States of America. On, that, on the way, in that school bus filled with others who were risking to go register to vote. They were scared. They didn't know what violence was going to be unleashed upon them. And they were stopped. That school bus was stopped by the state trooper who said, you can't go anywhere further because that bus is too yellow. So what did Mrs. Hamer do? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In a sense, she and many others said, we can't control all of the externals, but we are going to control what we can control, and we're going to make this thing bigger than what they want us to make it. When two, she was a year and a half later coming from South Carolina back to Mississippi through Mississippi on another bus with another group of people wanting to register to vote, and they pulled them off there and they put them in prison or in jail, and two... African-descended men were forced to beat her to the very edge of her life. But when she recovered, what happened? She used that very story to raise a consciousness of a nation on national television. Even though Lyndon B. Johnson and all of the leaders of the Democratic Party wanted her to hush up, the story got out. She could not be silenced. We all get to name our own selves, I think is what Jesus of Nazareth is telling us. And then here's the other thing about Jesus in this story. After they've been pressing, pressing against him all night, heal my, my loved one, cast out their demon, 
Where do they find him the next morning? Back in the wilderness, in a place apart, in before the sacred presence, to get clear to wrestle once again with his own demons, his own false expectations, to figure out who he is and who he is not. And when they come and find him, it says they hunt him. And when they come and find him, he takes a deep sigh. He said, let's go on to the next village so I can teach because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Hey, and as Walter Wink says in Engaging in Powers, even when Jesus of Nazareth is teaching, he's doing an exorcism. He's doing an exorcism on their minds because the whole project is preparing lives for liberation. It's not one or the other. It's always both. So lifting people up, lifting ourselves up as we seek to lift up one another calls us back to our own birthright selves and not the names, not the social determinants, not the roles and the places in the world that the powers have maybe forced upon us. We claim our own name. We claim our own connections to community. We claim our own power to have hope so that we can continue to work on the externals but already realize we are free. So when we gather to wrestle with these weird, weird stories of Jesus, and when we make room for one another to actually hear the own, our own authentic voice come from inside of us, rather than the voices of cacophony of the world that tell us who we're supposed to be, when we make room to heal from our own traumas, we are engaged in nothing left, less than the power of the resurrection. Born anew for our own soul purpose. Born anew for our own spirit purpose in the world. Thanks be to God. psalms before the one that we heard today, there is a lament that recalls the occupation and transport of Israel from its beloved Zion to the banks of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, where as captives they were required to sing songs about their love for their homeland to entertain their I don't know if you heard any of that, but <laughs> you can look at it on Zoom. When Karen heard this song, Babylon, she was overwhelmed with the need to recall that we live in a world now, in a country that was built on human flesh, that still maintains national sacrifice zones in which our civilized native populations were forced to live in a foreign land, to a world where climate refugees in Chad, Somalia, Bangladesh are forced out of their homes because of the lifestyle and habits of the world. In places like North Korea and Venezuela where terror occupies the streets, and in places like Gaza and Ukraine where active warfare keeps people enslaved. This is um, Babylon and thanks to John Sundell for helping us with this and also to the Psalms where we heard from Psalm 147 that our hope 
lies in a God that promises to restore us to the land of our heart, to the land of our hope, and heal our broken hearts. And the instructions for yeah. joining us. <clears throat> we'll sing the song, and then at the end, we'll repeat it in unison, and we'd love for you to sing with us. Thank you so much. It's wonderful when you make a commitment to support somebody else in this community or the broader community to reach out, to offer your time, your attention, your spirit, your imagination in prayer and presence. And we're also very appreciative when you make a financial offering to continue to support what it is that we seek to do in mercy, love, and justice. And so there's a, uh, an uh, offering plate in the back. You can send in a check. We've got QR codes now on our digital bulletins. 
uh, and um, the website is uh, ready to be up and running so you can reach back out in that way and click on something to make an offering. Right after church today, stick around because uh, Sterling and Joni are going to be facilitating a conversation on behalf of worship and education to hear from you about when we schedule, how we schedule, uh, and what it is that we're engaged in in terms of spiritual nurture and education. So I um, hope you can be a part of that. The, the last page of our bulletin are the questions that we're inviting you to, to reflect on. Next Sunday, we are gathering in the Fellowship Hall at 10 a.m. for a Mardi Gras brunch. We invite you to bring something to share. We'll eat, and then the Irving Street Ramblers will lead us in procession from Fellowship Hall to the sanctuary for our Mardi Gras uh, festival, uh, and they will be uh, playing throughout. And we invite you next Sunday that we've been putting out in the uh, newsletter uh, lists, links of lists of banned books. We're gonna be using a lot of these banned books to give to our Kano Kilts Freedom School this summer, some out on, in the kiosk on Irving Street. Um, so um, bring your banned books, which we will bless for the use in our community. There are signups along the hallway right here of upcoming events. We hope you can take a look at that sometime today. This, is, this Friday is the last day to register to vote if you want to participate in the primary. The primary uh, sample ballot for your uh, precinct is now available just by clicking on a link of NC Voter Lookup. So check that out. Do your research ahead of time because starting February 15th, you can vote early. We've got a a sheet with a list of places where you can early vote for the primary, which is the day of which is March the 5th. On Thursday evening, starting February 22nd, we start our five-week series on springtime of the soul. I've decided we're going to do that strictly online. I've heard from a number of you, you don't want to be out after dark, so we're going to be doing that online. Uh, the Zoom link will be available. 5.30 to 7 o'clock for five consecutive Thursday evenings. We gathered, some of us, last Saturday for a leaders gathering. And for those who were here, you got a laminated card with the priorities out of our visioning process of Parkway. And there are a bunch, if you did not get one, there are a bunch in the narthex in, a, in a, uh, a little plastic holder. So grab one so that you can be guided in your relationship to our community of faith by those. So we move now to our time of communion. And as uh, Michelle joins me, I, I just wanna say today, as, as is usual for the first Sunday of the month, we're gonna focus just on communion. But today, we wanna to honor the people who, who really are not as mobile in our community of faith. So we're gonna be passing first the trays of bread, of gluten-free wafers and bread, through the pews, grab it, hold it, and we'll, we'll receive the bread together. Then our servers will come and offer you either juice or wine and we'll receive that together. And during the closing song, they will come by, and so you can put your empty cup in the tray. Uh, so we receive in the pews today. So who's welcome at this table? Everyone. Everyone. Everybody wanting to express gratitude in the gifts of life. Who? Everyone. Everyone longing for the sustenance to keep Loving in the middle of our uncertainty and our pain and our longing for justice. Who? Everyone. Everybody looking for courage of community to resist the forces that tend to break the human spirit.
come only to receive the expansive gifts of God, come to be put back together as a community rising from separation. These are the signs of creator's abundance and Christ's love in the spirit's presence. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Holy one, we are sustained by the interweaving spirit of wholeness of life and we're grateful. We're sustained by the sense of community strengthening, strengthened by difference and enduring obstacles that separate us. And we are grateful. We are sustained by the sacrifices of sun and rain, plant and mineral, and the labor of so many. And we are grateful. We are sustained in our hope that we are bigger than what divides us when we come to this table. And we are grateful. Amen. a ritual of washing of hands. And the table of liberation was set and the words were enacted and the actions of Jesus of Nazareth at the table were present and the child of humanity took the bread and broke it. This bread of life, this bread of sustenance, this halechem ha'chayim, bread for the soul, bread for the body. And he gave thanks, baruch hatah, and offered it to each one, each one at the table, and said, this is my body, take and eat. Then he also took the cup, the fruit of the vine, and he gave thanks, and he offered it to each one. And he said, this is the cup of the promise of coming back together, always coming back together, being renewed, being healed, being lifted up. And he offered it to each one saying thanks. This is the promise. Say it with me, please. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us now share together.
take this bread, the bread of life, and let us eat together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the servers will go forth with the wine and the juice. cup of blessing. Take and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
give thanks for the refreshment at this common table. Not only with those in this community of faith, but with those across the globe who, ex who express it in so many different ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope that you will stick around for this conversation after the sending forth. So it, if you can, turn to somebody nearby. Maybe even if, they, if they're okay with it, take their hand. Lift them up. Amen. We lift one another up Amen. into our authentic selves. Yes. We lift one another up in community in the spirit of resurrection Amen. that we might go forth to make our difference trusting that everybody else is going to make their difference Amen. so that we can find healing. Amen. Go and adjust peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.